barikiwa na mashamba ni mwenu mutabarikiwa zao watumbo zenu kabona vyombo vyenu vya kukandia unga vita bariki blessed are those that carry the burden of god i believe in the power of words what you say you become how many believe that what you say you become father in the name of jesus we want to thank you for this beautiful morning that you have given unto us we don't take it for granted that we are here today it is by your presence it is by your anointing that god we have woken up this morning we want to thank you for the gift of life we want to thank you for the gift of health we want to thank you also for the gift of the holy spirit and we pray lord as even we continue with this life we believe that something good will happen to us and we are optimistic that this year will be the best year that we have ever had i know lord some of us as we were crossing over to this year we had a lot of troubles pains and discouragements of life but lord will not allow that to put us down but we will wake up every morning and say good things will happen to us i even pray for the word of god today and i arrest every spirit and work of the enemy that comes to steal the word from us and i pray that this word will be embedded in our spirits and that god we are going to grow in your word for your name's sake in jesus name we pray amen i want to thank god for this opportunity our archbishop and mrs bishop and also the entire team uh, of pastors uh, for giving me this opportunity to minister this morning uh, maybe you are new here my name is Benson Nganga I'm born again and I love Jesus as my personal savior and it is good to be clear I'm married to one female wife and we are blessed with two sons you know nowadays uh, people are married to men are married to men so nowadays when we introduce ourselves we have to make it clear we are married to one female wife she is not able to come we have a little boy and that is the reason why she is not here but soon she will be joining us to fellowship together with us now today on this sunday uh, our topic is overcoming temptations that is our main topic and i know god is going to bless us even as we um, pray and even ask god to help us overcome the many temptations that we go through in life and i know god is going to bless us now if you can please go to the book of daniel chapter 4 verses 27 that is where we are going to begin from and as you go there i would like to just make us a, a simple introduction to what i'm about to speak on today um temptations is a normal thing for each and every one of us every single person here at one point or another you have been tempted um tem temptation is normally in three levels Number one, we have what we call temptation from the flesh. You are tempted by the flesh. Paul said my spirit is willing but my flesh is weak. And even in the book of Romans chapter 7, if you can read the whole chapter, Paul is struggling with the self, the flesh. He says the things I want to do, I don't do. But the things I hate to do, I find myself doing. And he said, "Oh, who shall save me? O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall save me from this flesh?" And as he goes to Romans chapter 8, he says, "Therefore there is no no more condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus." And he goes to explain how he has fought with the flesh and through Christ he will overcome. And so there are temptations that come to us because uh, we are alive and well. You have the flesh the flesh will tempt you you will try to do this but the flesh tells you to do this and that is why there is a preacher who i listened to some years back and he said that when we are born again the first level of salvation is in your spirit that is where you get born again your spirit is washed by the blood of jesus and then from there the word of god takes effect so that our soul which is the mind may be renewed through the word of god and then from there the salvation of the body takes place because the flesh will always give you trouble 
the flesh will always tell you things that are not right. And so the first level of temptation is in the flesh. The second level of temptation is from people. It is always important to know that human beings will be used to tempt you. And they are vessels that are assigned by the devil to tempt those that are believers. And even sometimes you are tempted by fellow believers. So there is a temptation that comes to you from people. How do they tempt you? They gossip. They speak bad. They trap you. There are many times that you find Christ being tempted by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. They tempted Christ every day. And so, and now the problem is this. Matthew chapter 5 from verses 44 and 45, you read that scripture, it prohibits us from wishing people who are tempting us bad things. The Bible says you have heard that it was said that eye for an eye, but I come to say to you that love your neighbors, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who persecute you, and bless those who curse you. So how do you deal with humans that are tempting you? It is simple. You pray to God and tell God, I pray that they may not have access into my life. They may not have access into my children. They may not have access into what I do in life. Hey, are we together on that? And so the second level of temptation, as we have said, is the temptation from people, fellow human beings. And I was telling people at lunch hour, I was ministering there this week, and I say to the people that there are different levels of people that will come to you to tempt you. Number one, they are what we call human vessels with an assignment from Satan. These are people who have been given work by the devil to bring you down. They are number two, what we call spies. It is written in the Bible. They spied on Jesus so that they may have something against him. These are people that you will face every day. Number three, they are demonic influencers. People with an influence from the enemy. They will come after you. And there are so many categories we can speak of. But these are normal people that will come to you and tempt you. The third level of temptation is from the devil. Satan will tempt you. The Bible says when Jesus was fasting for 40 days, Satan came to tempt him. And he said, you can turn these stones into bread. But Jesus said it is written. And so Jesus overcame the devil through the word of God. And so today I want to speak on the third level of temptation. When Satan tempts you, what should you do? And if you're writing somewhere, my topic is five legal grounds that Satan uses to tempt you. If you allow these things in your life, the enemy will overcome you. The devil will defeat you. He will fight you until you are defeated. And so if you're writing somewhere, I want to speak on five legal grounds that will allow Satan to tempt you and of course to overcome you. And so in the book of Daniel chapter 4, as I had said earlier, if you can please go there, the book of Daniel chapter 4 verses 27, the Bible says, therefore, and this is Daniel now, After Nebuchadnezzar got a dream, he called on all the wise people to come and interpret for him. But there was found none who could be able to do it. But there was a man who had a wisdom from above. His name is Daniel. And so he came and interpreted a dream that Nebuchadnezzar ha, uh, had had at night and he saw a big tree that was cut. And... Uh, so Daniel now is interpreting that dream in verse 27. The Bible says, Daniel chapter 4, 27, Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice, renounce your sins by doing what is right, and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that your prosperity will continue. Number one level that the enemy will use against you so that he may tempt you and defeat you is what we call unrepented sins. And so here is Daniel speaking to a king. A king who has built nations, conquered nations. But he is living in sin. He has pride and he is doing things that are not right. 
And so the servant of God, Daniel, comes to him and says, if you repent your sins, if you stop doing what you are doing, and the Bible says you accept my advice, you renounce your sins by doing what is right, and your wickedness, your evil deeds, by letting go of the oppressed, then your prosperity will be prolonged. Ufanisi wako utaendelea. Now, for the first level where you need to overcome the enemy, so that when he comes to tempt you, you will defeat him, is when we repent our sins. Do not harbor sin in your heart. The Bible says, if a man says he has not sinned, he is a liar. And so it is very important, every time you come to the house of God, the first thing you should do is to tell God, I'm sorry for the things that I have done against you and against other people. Hey, am I speaking to somebody? And so when we repent our sins, we hinder the enemy from tempting us and overcoming us. Jesus said, the enemy of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. He is coming. He will come. He will fight me, but he has nothing in me. When you have a sin in your life, you allow a secret sin into your life, and you continue living in that sin, the enemy has authority over your life. And he will tempt you, he will fight you, and he will overcome you. But I pray today under the Holy Spirit that you may be able to overcome every sin that you have been struggling with. Whatever you had in 2015, whatever struggles you had in 2015, I pray that when we come to 2016, you are going to overcome them in the name of Jesus. Whatever sin that you struggled with in 2015, my prayer this morning is that we, as we enter in the year 2016, it may be well with you. Can you go to the book of First Thessalonians? Chapter 5, uh, from verses 23. I want to show you the three levels where the sin comes. And the three levels that every one of us, we should repent sins. If we handle these three areas of our lives, then we will be forgiven. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 23. The Bible says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray... God, your whole spirit, soul, and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. Let me repeat that. And I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. There are three areas that any one of us can sin. The first area is your body. There are sins that if you commit them, they come to your body. It is written, even Paul says that whoever that does sexual immorality, they sin against their own body. It is in the Bible. They are sins that lead to death. It is written in the book of John that if you see a brother sinning, a sin that is not leading to death, go warn them. So there are some sins that we can commit that will cause your flesh to die, will cause diseases and infirmities to come into your body. It is written in the Bible. And so the first level of sins that you should repent is the sins that come and we do through our body. Number two, the Bible says that you may be sanctified in your souls. The soul is another place where sin can inhabit and live there. The soul is the mind. You should have the mind of Christ. And that is why Paul said, may this mind that was in Christ be, you, be with you also. And so every one of us, we should pray concerning our thoughts. Hey, am I talking to somebody? Every time you stand before God, you should tell God, I repent the thoughts that I have, evil thoughts. Some of you may have suicidal thoughts. Some of you have thoughts of killing somebody. Some of you have thoughts of envy. Some of you have thoughts of immorality. And that is why the Bible says, if you look unto a woman and you desire after her, you have committed adultery. So those are the sins of the mind, the soul. And so that is why when Paul is writing to the Thessalonians, he says, I pray that your, your body and your soul and your spirit may be sanctified and become blameless unto the coming of Christ. So the third area where you need to repent of your sins is in the area of your spirit. There are some sins that we commit 
that are in the area of the spirit. And there was a time Bishop taught us concerning some of these sins. For example, if you're a born again Christian and you go visit a witch doctor, you are sinning against your spirit. You are exposing your spirit. If you're here, you go to diviners places where they divine, they tell you things. They tell you carry a red ribbon, uh, put something on your, on, your, on your waist. Then you are exposing your spirit. These are called sins of the spirit. And that is why even there is a Bible, there is a verse that warns us that if we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, it is unpardonable. It is a sin that cannot be forgiven. So all of us here, we need to be careful. If you're here, you start fighting men of God, fighting preachers, that is a sin that goes into your spirit. Because through the spirit, that is where we are blessed. Hey, am I talking to somebody? So the first thing that we need to do as a believer, so that you can overcome the enemy when he comes to you, is to repent all sins in your life. Can you just lift up your hands for one minute? Say in the name of Jesus, this morning, I repent every hidden sin on my body, my soul, and my spirit. In Jesus' name. May that become your portion. Number two, when the enemy comes to fight you, if he finds that you don't have sin, there is another area where he can use as a legal ground to overcome you. And it is the area of unforgiveness. If you walk with unforgiveness, listen, when we live with people, there will always be issues. There will always be battles. There will always be quarrels. That is normal. Family quarrels. At the workplace, at home, with your marriage spouse, there will always be issues. However, a wise person is a person who decides to forgive. And there are two levels of forgiveness. I have even mentioned them some time back here. Number one is where you let go. Number two is reconciliation. So there are two levels of forgiveness. One, you forgive somebody and then you allow yourself to reconcile with them. Then unforgiveness leaves your heart and the enemy cannot use unforgiveness against your life. You have a reason to be angry. You have a reason not to forgive people. You have a reason to harbor emotions that are painful for years because maybe of what your mom did when you were young. Maybe what your father did when you were young. But somebody who wants to mature in Christ and to overcome Satan, we have to reach a point where we have to let go. You have to forgive people and you allow them to go. But the former president who was killed in the U.S., J J John Kennedy, said, forgive people but never forget their names. Forgive people but never forget their names because they may come after you again. Always have a lesson. I have forgiven that particular person, but he has the ability to hurt me again. So what I should do, I should always remember their name. Okay, it may, it may seem not popular, but for me, I think that's a very strong statement. Always, it's very good and important to forgive people. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the pains that you have in life. But if you want to have a wonderful marriage, may you forgive your spouse. If you want to have 